in like right? Yeah. So now we're live. So that for those people joining, we'll get started in a moment. Thank you very much for joining this session today. Okay, good morning, everybody, and good evening, uh, and wherever you are in the world. So thank you for joining us. Obviously, this is a, a global event with global leaders, and uh, I'm very honored to be moderator today. So my name is Michael Walsh, and I'm uh, with PBEC, Pacific Basin Economic Council. It's an NGO think tank and connectivity organization established since 1967. I currently reside in Hong Kong for the past 13 years and originally from the UK. I get to engage with multiple leaders like my fellow panelists today, political and business from sectors and member states across APEC on a regular basis. The main thing for PBEC these days is advocating digital cross-border trade and lobbying for a fair rules-based system being applied regionally for digital transformation regulation to encourage open source inclusivity and transparency as much as legally possible in a sustainable manner. Firstly, I want to thank Dr. Frank uh, Richter, founder and chairman of Horasis, for inviting us today at the Global Visions community, uh, putting on a fantastic virtual event called the Extraordinary Meeting, bringing an array of global leaders that enables important dialogue and connectivity, cross boundaries and culturally divides to make to take place, especially at this crucial juncture that we all face. So today's topic is uh, focused on the future role of the digital leader. You know, business leaders need to think digitally in the age of COVID-19. They must be uh, more prepared, prepared to be agile and build organizations that embrace change and manage them effectively. How can companies, for instance, use digitalization to become more effective and relevant to their target audience who demand it? Our social media and others always being connected as good as face-to-face -face meetings. Um, so we're going to look at the future role of digitalized business leaders. So I'm glad to see uh, Yuri. Good morning, Yuri, from Germany, right? Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Welcome. Um, so what I'll, what I'll do is I'll just ask our fellow panelists uh, when they're not speaking to mute. So we're joined by Yuri Hong, founder of She Blockchainers in Germany. Yuri will share her thoughts on upskilling the workforce to be digitally ready, uh, some of the soft skills requirements to call yourself a digital leader, and the new jobs created by this digital transformation we see accelerating during the pandemic. So we're, we're hearing from Yuri in a second. Then we'll hear from Anant, uh, Chief Executive Officer from JK Enterprises India. Anant will look like to focus on the future digital leaders going further into the skill set he sees are required, as well as the fast encroachment of big corporation online media players into our daily lives, shaping behaviors and potential misinformation to retain, retain power by governments. Then we'll hear from Lewis Lee, Chief Executive Officer, Pacific Founder Ventures China. Lewis will share with us a China perspective, investment trends, and a particular segment that is seeing a lot of money being raised despite COVID on the Asian stock exchange in biotech. Sorry, Yuri, can you uh, mute yourself when you're not speaking, please? Um, in China, 5G is being rolled out nationwide, and China is already globally the largest in 5G smart tone ownership. Lewis would also like to emphasize the importance of listening to leading doctors and following the science, how it should take a more leading role in advising populations and how to prevent such pandemics of the future through digital means. Well, then... Hear from uh, Rogerio uh, Simone's Chief Executive Officer of Unon United Kingdom. Rogerio will share his own experience working remotely as a startup business and working in remote teams during COVID, which is perhaps a permanent feature for many SMEs in a COVID recovery. Also, he wishes to share the benefits in utilizing digital applications to compensate for less face to face, however, stressing the importance still of face to face. He also wishes to pose a general theme question to all of us, which he'll go into at the end of his talk. 
about the barriers and limitations that digitalization future may pose to all of us. So we all agree that each speaker will have a six minute introduction. So the first minute uh, talking a little bit about themselves and five minutes to cover their initial points. As the moderator, I will manage the time as best I can and remind the speakers when they have one minute remaining. I do welcome questions from the audience in the chat function on your screens. I certainly hope to cover at least one or two of those in the final 10 minutes. So let's, uh, so a lot to get through, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So let's kick off with uh, our first speaker and Yuri as ladies first, the floor is yours. Yuri, unmute yourself, please. Yeah, thank you for the great introduction and uh, um, uh, great meeting you everyone. This, uh, I don't think we can see how many people are in the room, but uh, I think we have like 10 people. Okay. Um, so uh, I myself uh, have, uh, I have been in the, involved in this like, technology digitalization in the past few years and uh, in terms of like digital related work, including social media, I have been working on this uh, tech and startup space for more than like 12 years. Um, and um, um, I, I have been also heavily involved in the blockchain space. So I have founded this Women in Blockchain Initiative. Um, and these days also I'm working on the tech startup consulting. Um, that's yeah my main role as a professionally. Right now I'm, I'm sitting in Germany, um, originally from South Korea. <laughs> I have been in the Singapore for, uh, for in the past 10 years. And uh, I think working in the very diverse and international environment have grown me such a, such in a high, like high level uh, scale in terms of the soft skill set and hard skill set, as well as the understanding of different, uh, different people and different uh, behavior, different culture. Uh, so today I'm really glad to talk about this, like a future role of the digital leader and uh, what kind of the um, what kind of the leadership is necessary in this uh, changing moment, changing environment. <laughs> so um, yesterday I, I had this uh, this uh, value venturing festival I was running and uh, we had uh, such a great insights from there, like uh, covering this uh, like mental, uh, mental and health and uh, some collaborative environment in the uh, in entrepreneurship and also some like impact investment, how, what is an important aspect to uh, give more access to the investment to the youth. And also like what is the, uh, how to start from like starting small, but uh, with having the like a large and the big mindset. Uh, so uh, there's a different things that we covered that that was actually very important to, to the future leaders. Uh, so today I'm going to briefly talk about um, what kind of future roles that uh, we need to uh, we need to consider? If especially if you are uh, considering, um, I'm not too sure like what kind of the audience we have right now. But uh, uh, for those who's a uh, little bit from the uh, nurturing perspective, what kind of roles will be important? And also for those who's experienced as senior leaders, uh, probably um, how to nurture these young. Uh, like a next generations from there. So I'm highly passionate about how this digitalization and digital movement is impacting to our daily lives. Um, and there are some conversations around how this um, technology is actually uh, taking away some of the jobs we have. But I'm actually very bullish on the digitalization and uh, it's actually creating a lot of new kind of jobs. Uh, for example, like these days uh, with um, this uh, pandemic situation pushed everyone to go digital and we are having actually this kind of uh, wonderful event digitally, which uh, is actually a lot more beneficial that we can actually have a uh, given access to people who's who can join us like from everywhere in the world. Not, uh, so I was a speaker last uh, year in, uh, in near uh, the Cascades, a very beautiful city near Lisbon. Um, so compared to that event, uh, that this event, we can open up this conversation to anyone who wants to join from any, anywhere in the world 
regardless of the, where they are and what they do. So um, this kind of uh, new environment actually opens up a lot of new opportunities. So uh, a few One minute. material stuff. Okay, a few material stuff that uh, uh, that what's gonna coming off um, is that um, um, I think that um, this digital digital um, um, yeah. What I was going to say is that some of the jobs that can come up in the future role. Um, so this um, like a remote um, remote patient um patient um sorry i was a bit like um uh, remote patient uh, caring so the doctor's role it will be changing as uh, not only sitting and then they are waiting for the um uh, for the patients they can actually actively engage with this new patient and also uh, the digital uh, like uh, like blockchain and AI and quantum computing aspect that uh, they will create a lot of more like a data driven like a scientist um, like not only the scientist per se as in you have to sit in the lab but uh, you actually work on a lot of data that uh, that shows like a lot of like a visualization and also giving more information driven uh, decision making perspectives for for the leaders and also from the youth as well um, and uh, I think that um, blockchain is actually the government driven uh, technology in my understanding, having been working in that area for like for several years. So when the blockchain infrastructure is actually set up uh, at the cross continental level, uh, we will see a lot more benefit, like, a lot more collaborative approaches uh, when, when it comes to the decision making. Uh, processes. For example, that uh, like not only the companies are, uh, you know, like the smart contract and all these like, legal documents and uh, and so on. Those uh, those shared uh, critical can be critical information can be shared through this uh, network, uh, like commonly shared collaborative network, so that we can focus on more time on discussing what to improve instead of discussing how to uh, how to sort out these legal issues cross continentally. And uh, okay, yeah. Yuri, if yeah. we can just hold it there for a minute because we're going to yeah. go in the second round of. You know, what are affirmative actions that we can take from today's discussion? And I think you were heading into that direction of what blockchain could be a solution for governments which are already obtaining that. So what I'd like to yeah. do is hear from the other panelists and then we'll come back to those those wider issues of uh, solutions per se. Um, so yeah. I'd like to hand over the floor now to Anant uh, coming to us from India, uh, currently obviously in a bit of lockdown yourself still. But um over to you, Anand. You have the floor. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, very good morning to my fellow panelists and uh, worldwide attendees. I thank uh, the organizer, Frank Jurgen, uh, to have me back at Horasis. You know, this is the twice, uh, second time this year. I also want to acknowledge uh, one of the ambassadors of Horasis, Dinesh Joshi, is attending this program right now as one of the attendees. Uh, it's a pleasure and privilege to be part of this engaging uh, Digital Connect platform. I am Anand Singhania. I'm the CEO of uh, JK Enterprises and I'm a director of the JK organization. Uh, the JK organization is a very large and old organization based out of India into varied areas. I uh, focus on uh, real estate and finance. And uh, besides that, I'm quite active in many chambers of commerce and other honorary activities. So coming to our topic today, what is a digital leader? Obviously, we all know what are the skill sets that are required in today's day and age, but I'd like to just name a few of them. Uh, you see, at the core of the digital leadership is, uh, is the strategic use of companies' digital assets to achieve their business objectives. So if I name a few, so I think number one, uh, is digital literacy. Uh, the leaders must have the knowledge to analyze uh, digital tools to enable their co-workers and employees to be more productive. The leaders must understand the different media platform and avail and make them confident, informed, and make effective decisions for their organization and customers. Take, for example, Zoom. 
you know the leading it's now become synonymous with video call, video conferencing they have understood exactly what uh, the customer wants another second one i would say is communication communication is vital for any good leader especially in the case of digital leadership the leader must be able to communicate a vision and direction in an effective manner he must be able to coordinate bring out the best out of his people to make this team successful making a good working environment you know communication even at the product level is so important for it to be clear and effective if you say nike you know the first few words that come in your mind is just do it that's how effective your communication should be the third point i'd like to touch about is cultural awareness in today's day and age age you know we are connected across the world i mean look at this panel we are in i think four different continents that we've come across to be a part of this uh, event today this would never be possible if in the earlier days now it's all very possible so each one of us have to take the mix of cultures that come into the into the play we are looking at global teams we are looking at situations where you know the connect to understand the nuances is very important i mean even a company as big as apple they just launched their online store in india last week and i was surprised when i called their call center and i've got this feedback from other people that they uh, the call center reps all uh, speaking in uh, you know in foreign accents and they are not, unable to understand the indian accent so this is how people need to adapt and change to to adapt themselves to the culture the fourth point i want to touch upon is about adaptability adaptability and agility you know our, uh, michael also mentioned in his opening remarks is very important especially in the ever changing landscape of the digital world it needs to be done to change to adjust to the new norms at the drop of a dime is fundamental to any business's success you know take a us company tjx their merchandise changes every week they they may depending on the market requirement they may stock up on jackets they may stock up on uh, bottoms and so and so forth they are continuously adapting to the growing needs and they have grown in a time where other brick and mortar companies have uh, not done so well and lastly uh, decisiveness and the ability to problem solve is another very important skill of the future digital leader this is been there all along with the traditional leadership as well but it's become very critical going forward uh, ability to you know tackle the problem before it comes have a vision into the future is something that's very important mm. in summation the leader of today is need to be adapt to be nimble footed so as to benefit from a rapidly changing world the world we live is changing at a rapid pace and the leaders of tomorrow need to be extremely agile digital savvy have a high degree of empathy and be goal oriented and lastly i just want to touch upon one other point which is you know the right now the future is not about just about information they say data is the new oil but i think it's also about the narrative the information which is being poured out be it social media mainstream media you know there's fake news the internet is always shaping our behavior and actions like they say if you haven't paid for the product means you are the product you know it's estimated that about 3 and a half billion people search google daily and each of these searches helps the search engines decide you know what they need to serve you next it depends on what time you search what are your likes where you're traveling to what type of topics you're searching about this information is used by them to target you with news items uh commerce e-commerce links propaganda we've all heard you know about the political scandal with that was cambridge analytica which had done on facebook mm. uh in the us so, so every and that, and, and, and I, can i just pause you there for a second so we obviously as i mentioned in our pre-conversation it, it becomes uh an even wider discussion uh about big corps and how their effects on lives and i think it literally could be a whole session on its own uh and we'd love to talk more uh with you guys on this. Uh so let's see if we can come back to it a little bit more in the second round, but I'd like to keep it moving along the panel if I may, and I want to bring in Lewis now quickly. If Lewis, are you able to turn your camera on? If not, then 
can you can you um able to are we able to hear you oh there we are so uh lewis um, i'd like to bring you in now with a obviously a, a very important china perspective with china the growing china as we have heard now for many years um we need to hear what what's going on and, and what you what you're seeing what you're thinking from a digital leader perspective uh, so the floor is yours lewis you're muted lewis can you unmute yourself hi everyone can you hear me now is that cool yes okay, okay. so i let get it started so um, i'm lewis uh, founder and ceo of pacific founder venture so i focus on early stage investment for tax tech startup in china and asia so uh, i'm the first generation of mobile internet entrepreneur so I have been successfully found multiple digital unicorn, which invested by Tencent, Alibaba, and several uh, very famous venture capital in China. So I'm very fortunate to be spending last 10 years, including this year in China mainland. So I'm trying to go through some uh, really detailed day, day, daily operation, how we tackle the coronavirus for the past 10 months. So um, it's been a very exciting journey for me because uh, my newborn son was born in 10, 10 months ago in Hong Kong. So we decided to go back to China mainland for uh, to taking care of him. But in, unfortunately, I have to spend a month until February uh, to, to enter China. So the China have a very big spread out, but in, in terms of control and 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 cuff and like run up i think is they do a very effective way in terms of the digital wise so first because our cell phone was only by one uh cell phone number and, and bonded to your id number and also one banking card so basically it's already authentic by a real person so it's really really easier to track people where have they been so the country uh classify uh, um classify china in different uh color like red yellow green zone in terms of the the numbers of infected people and cases so anyone who's been red zone you can't travel or without any 14 day of quantity and also a negative result of the testing so for yellow zone i think they are able to come back but they are not able to go out and also they need 14 days quarantine and for the green zone, after May, uh, uh, the green zone are fairly uh, tra uh, tra uh, travel between uh, different green zone. So I think the the, the unique ID and the identification for our mobile device is the crucial idea. Ha uh, crucial uh, distinctive uh, feature why we can control the virus so so effectively. You know. Um, most of the Western world, they uh, use an Apple ID, they use an email address without a proper uh, authentication for the uh, for the real identity. So it's very easy, very difficult for them to check people where have they been. So uh, first is the identification, the location, LBS, that make us more uh, easier to control. And then secondly, different cities, different province, they uh, they apply. Um, also the QR code to scan where have you been and then self decam claim my form. Uh, do you have any symptom? Blah, blah, blah. So I just checked in Beijing hotel for last two months. I need to scan free QR code and a few of a form, uh, to, in order to stay in Beijing hall hotel, which is five star. So the first code is proof. Have you been to any yellow or red show? The second one is to claim yourself. Do you have any infected? uh like symptom or any like 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 um uh, thing to to be paying attention to the th the number three the qr code is whether you uh been like dealing with any other like uh, seafood like highly risky like uh infective like a uh, career because in china that this two months mostly the cases was like import in immigrant cases and also the seafood market so it's very funny, the seafood, uh, the, the virus was contained in the package in, instead of the food itself. So seafood is very sensitive in China uh, for the past two months. So other than the QR code and our own uh, LBS identification, 
I think um, the, the social media would help as well. So if you have a WeChat account and then you look at the WeChat moment, they have an official statistics uh, like sensing uh, numbers for all the country in the world and all the places in China. What is the new cases, remaining cases, cure cases, all update every single day. So we can see by continent, by cities, by by like by alphabetical, we can see how how was the virus spread. So I think this one is doing very well, but I don't need to open a Google and then go type your website. So WeChat, Weibo, and Tansen News, they all come from a centralized database. So which one, which uh, there's no fake news and people are more reliable and then people know actually it's very dangerous to go uh, out of the country. I think China is more, Chinese people is more cooperative in terms of um, border control. So most cases are come from outside China to, to, to enter China. So right now, uh, it's in the holiday right now. Well, uh, we have a one week uh, national holiday and also the mid autumn festival, the mooncake festival. All the travel attraction right now is clouded with people just like before the virus because no one can go outside China without 14 days of uh, quarantine. So all the tennis game as well, they, they defer to cancel, the, the Beijing one, the Shanghai one, and the Shenzhen one. So we don't compromise like other, uh, like for other any ma major event or, or, or sport. We just want to make the virus more control and the people are safe. So- Lewis, finally, one minute warning. Okay, finally, I that. want to- Talk about the touchless part, maybe, of that. Okay. So the little bit touch about the uh, <clears throat> uh, actually this year the 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 the, the innovate, innovation for medical or vaccine uh, development is quite interesting. Before the virus, actually China government already start uh, encourage research institution to do their own vaccine or medicine. The, before China usually duplicate other people's medicine, like we, we call it substitute medicine, right? So our vaccine already out. So right now people are lining up like the very important people, the government official, they have like uh, two vaccine uh, for two shots. So I think we'll see how the vaccine work and I look forward to open up the border for China soon. Okay, so we will do a little bit further in the Q&A section. Yeah, okay, well, thank you, Lewis. Um... Obviously, we're all jealous for those who are not in China with getting the freedom back uh, of everyday life. And I just like I think it's a good segue to go to uh, Ruggiero in London. Obviously, thank you for joining us early morning. And um, you would like to touch upon the whole experience of working remotely. So the, ch the floor is yours, Ruggiero. Thanks, Michael. Uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, it's great to be back at Oranasis, uh, even though that this is a virtual event. But it's quite interesting to see people uh, speaking from their own uh, places uh, of work and, and countries. Uh, so, yes, um, I'm a journalist uh, and um, also a digital entrepreneur. And both as a journalist and as a digital entrepreneur, I have had uh, years of experience in working remotely with uh, remote teams in different parts of the world. Uh, for example, I was uh, head of department at the BBC and I was based in London and we had people in Brazil, we had people in the US and we had people, uh, other uh, freelance correspondents based on everywhere in the world. I mean, more than 10 cities and in all continents. And this was a challenge, but I think good communication and good organization just made everything possible. Uh, and uh, as a, a digital entrepreneur with my startup based in London, I also uh, worked with people based in Brazil, based in Belarus, based in other places um, in, in, in Europe. And uh, that was also possible using good communication. I think the main difference in the, in the past, we uh, compare, compare in the past with the situation that we have today is that uh, when, when I was like based in London working for the BBC, for example, we had a main office. We had our, most of our team based in London and we had these fragmented uh, uh, aspect, different, different uh, uh, teams 
spread around the world, where we had this centralized structure. I think what we having, uh, what we see today is that the whole structure of teams and uh, companies is being fragmented. So, so it, it we, we might cease to have that main structure, and this, of course poses a lot, a, a lot of challenges because then the fragmentation becomes the norm. And how do you do that? How, how, do you, how can you be like the digital leader for the future working in that, uh, uh, in that situation? I see this whole digital structure or, or lo- the logistics of the digital world as uh, an, an equation. And, of course, both the leaders and the people working for the companies, working with them, they are the human aspects of that equation and the role of the leader of course is to create the right conditions for the company to thrive for the people to uh, do their best for the people to uh, perform in their best uh, uh, abilities the leader has to create the conditions to give the opportunity and to allow people to work in the best way possible and um, I think that uh, it, that can be done using digital platforms. So in our case, for example, Unknown, uh, we are a digital startup and we uh, create uh, apps and, and platforms. One is a social media. The other one that we are creating now is a, a, a messaging service. And we try to overcome those challenges. For example, we have uh, real-time translation in order to overcome the, the barrier of translation. And we do believe that the digital platforms of communication can help us uh, uh, doing that. The thing is, the digital itself also uh, brings a lot of challenges. And because uh, I think the main one is that we see digital communication and the digital platforms as a ways of uh, uh, making everything much more effective, much more efficient, uh, of uh, increasing productivity and we also know that in companies and in working environments, uh, most of the creative side and most of the most amazing ideas that we see coming out of companies and teams, actually, they uh, just came out of those random situations and serendipity and moments in which actually we will not be effective at all. Like, for example, you meet someone in the, uh, on the queue. Uh, 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 it's a long queue and you're waiting for your coffee and then you meet someone and you start a conversation. And then uh, the greatest idea that the company has ever had comes from that uh, random encounter. So I think that we should try and use digital in order to overcome the challenges and the barriers posed by, by digital itself. So uh, we should somehow use digital in order to create things that we, you know, were more commonplace, I think, in the beginning of the internet, like concepts like navigating, like browsing. I think that we should try to open up spaces in the digital world, in the digital communication, in the digital platforms and tools that we use as companies and as leaders in order to allow that serendipity to happen. Because that serendipity is the factor that is going to overcome the challenges posed by the digital. Because if we are going to have only meetings that seem to be effective, uh, uh, you know, the right duration and only talking about the right subject using the digital channels, we're going to lose the incredibly powerful uh, uh, moments of serendipity, of random encounters, casual encounters that are so important for teams to to thrive, to get to know each other better, to you know, to share some personal stories or feelings. And I think that we'll have to find ways of using those digital channels in order to combat or even like to unlearn some of the things that we got used to. Uh, through the the very digital space. It's almost like try to use the digital space in order to uh, uh, fight the the, the new uh, values of productivity and efficiency that came with the digital use. So I think that's the the main challenge that I see. I think it's possible, but it's almost like, okay, if we're going to be more digital now, so let's use the digital to remind ourselves of the power of the physical encounter and and to try to uh, go back a bit to the uh, uh, moments of uh, serendipity and casual encounters, which are so, 
so important. Okay, that's fantastic. And we're so we've managed to hear from all of the panelists uh, so far, and um, we've got about just over ten minutes left in the session. So first of all, obviously at this stage, for all of you who are attending, feel free to uh, drop a question in the chat box if you have uh, one that's posing on your mind um, that you've heard from any of us speaking this morning. But I want to bring it back to you and maybe start with Rogerio going back the other way. Um, so you've been working at home and you have remote teams and I, I agree with you. It's like, how do we use digital to sort of tackle the barriers of digital itself and get back to some of that serendipity uh, um, element to collaboration? So how do we address, um, I guess, time spent on digital devices in this sort of new away from office scenario in many countries? I guess outside of China, because China's gone back to normal pretty much, and others have as well. But majority are still in this sort of flexible work environment. But how do we sort of manage that, you know, from a distance without having a spy camera on somebody's computer and trying to log, you know, how many hours they spend in, on the database, whatever? What, what, is there a digital solution to time management? I think actually time management uh, can be. Um easily actually uh, tackle uh, through digital because uh, we know how to, you know, just shut down the computer. I think that it's, uh, for example, as a journalist, as a young journalist, I used to go to the newsroom and spend 12, 13, 14 hours a day in the newsroom. And I just like, I didn't realize that I was spending that much time in the place because basically everything was happening and I just couldn't control my time very well or just so much involved in the whole thing. I think that when, uh, if we, if we know that by shutting down the computer or the phone that we are going to be disconnected, we're going to dedicate to our private affairs. I think that is a straightforward thing. Of course, if, um, uh, if the personal and the professional, all go through the same channels. If we like, you know, if we use the computer and the phone in order to work and to watch films and to talk to our families, everything goes through the same tool. Of course, that is more uh, 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 is more of a challenge. But I I believe that it's it requires discipline. But I think it's in a way it's easier than um, when you just like. Uh, immersing yourself in a physical environment like a big office and you just like you know lose track of the time i think that it, it's it, it requires discipline but i think that because it's connected to tools mm. if we shut them down then that's it okay i want to go to yuri now quickly to about um you know digitalization has been seen as a means to attract better qualified staff uh, in future as as the nature and place of work as Rogerio has alluded to is changing rapidly in certain countries and industries so um Yuri is that a true statement uh you mentioned a, you you're very bullish about digital you see it as creating new jobs can you go a little bit more into uh what what you're seeing maybe in Germany or from Singapore previously some of your previous experiences of the new jobs, the new norm, as it were, of digitalization that you're seeing and helping customers with? So I myself have been working remotely since uh, like 10, 11 years ago. So my first job in Singapore was actually remote. And then, like, yeah, I got moved to transfer to the office later. So um, I think working remotely has been actually part of my job. And also when I was working on social media, I was working closely with Intel um, and I covered all the APIC markets. And we, and Intel and also Four Seasons Hotel. So both the digital company, like the IT company and also the, the consumer, like a retail based company, um, I managed all these meetings and everything with uh, teams in different countries in, in Asia, like even China and like Malaysia, in the India, Korea. Uh, we did uh, a lot of the remote uh, conference calls. 
uh, and which happen like uh, not just like once a month, which happen actually several times a week. So I have been actually very um, um, experienced in, the, in this kind of setup that what everyone else is actually experiencing these days. Uh, then I realized that I have been in the digital space, that's why it happened so for, for me, like um, somewhat like that. And that was, I'm not talking about just a few years ago, it was like seven, eight years ago. Um, so having said that, um, like uh, from the startup perspective, what like Rogerio is doing, like making, creating this kind of the platform, enabling this digital, um, digital business operation processes is actually one aspect that a lot of the new jobs will be created from there. Um, but also second part is like as a user, um, we don't have to hire someone like sitting right next to you because we will, everyone will be uh, eventually, will be get used to this kind of digital uh, meetings and so on and working with the team member who's not sitting right next to you. So, um, they will open up not only just hard skill sets, but uh, people will get used to working with people from different backgrounds, which is actually a very important aspect in the future. Mm -hmm. That, yeah, that will, yeah, they will um, be okay. um, changing our, shifting our mindset. Wonderful. So that's that's a great point. Is that you know, which I think Anant alluded to as well is just the fact that it is becoming through digital means, a global workforce that we need to look at it. So from so the cultural understanding is so important, how we keep that connectivity. So with uh, a few minutes left, I'd like to go to uh, Lewis quickly and, and chat a little bit more about China and then finish with an ant about the digital leadership and a little bit about Big Corp. So one minute, 30 seconds, Lewis, rounding up about what you're seeing the digital space for China. What is the focus going forward? Is it more of the same? Or do you see fundamental changes with the 5G rollout? Well, I guess uh, I've been attending a, a very a gigantic a robotic uh, symposium last week in Shanghai. I think like right now the trends for digital space already passed from software, uh, like like simple platform model, uh, like startup like uh, the the the. the uh, the delivery, uh, the taxi, healing. So uh, there's a lot of robotic company uh, fire throwing. And also since the trade war about the chips, the processor, I think in the next two to three years, the digital transformation will go from like software to hardware. Mm -hmm. And they're very funny about the robotic stuff. Use before software and hardware they're separate okay so the hardware company only make the part and then the software company do something for the hardware but what i see right now software comp the number of software company will be lower and lower because the hardware company the dominant one will develop their own operation system develop their own artificial intelligence so i think the major uh change for the landscape for China, no matter for the uh, entrepreneurial or the investment landscape, will be robotic and the, the processor. I mean, I'm very ashamed to say that we are very advanced in 5G infrastructure. Uh, if I'm not focusing with our, if China are not focusing on this part, we don't have a 5G phone to use the 5G uh, network. So I think the next three years will be more robotic and processor. This is okay, perfect. And Anand, to finish, just to talk, bring it back to the title, The Future of Digital Leaders. I mean, you managed, you, you mentioned many different traits we all require. I think I, I'm a little bit um, behind on all of those, but <laughs> I need to train up on some of those. So Anand, over to you to finish us out. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you. Um, I think uh, the future, you know, for at least if I look at it from an India perspective, a lot of things are happening on the ground. I mean, the digital connectivity that's come about with the mobile revolution over the last 10 years has shown a lot more people being connected. We have about uh, about half a billion people connected through mobile internet, and they are, you know, lapping up digital services, uh, you know, banking, digital banking. Uh, even uh, government subsidies are now all getting digitally, uh, you know, they call debit direct benefit transfers. 
uh, to the uh, bank accounts. So the digital literacy is going up in a big way, and I think uh, future-wise, things are going to be uh, you know a lot more services. Even the government, if you look at the government services, are all digitally available now to the common man, and at a flick of a button, they Our are time able is to up. accept those. <laughs> The clock has stopped at 45. All right. So that's uh, wonderful. I want to thank everybody uh, who's come and attended this panel. Before I let my speakers go, I would like to take a group selfie. I've been asked to do that. Um, but for every those who have attended, thank you. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the session. It, sometimes we need more. We need more time. And I think digital uh, can help in that solution in providing more time for each other. Uh, to talk about some of these key issues. So hopefully next time we can uh, broaden the topic discussion over a longer time period. So thank you very much. That concludes our panel and enjoy the rest of today's sessions at our extraordinary meeting. Bye bye. Thanks everyone. Bye bye. Okay, um, guys, quickly take a picture. Well, I don't know if you can do a group one. Just say. Everybody's taking selfies. <laughs> okay. How does it come out? I don't know. It doesn't show it to me at my end. Here we go. <laughs> Email to everyone. Really? Yeah, not bad, actually. Save the photo. <laughs> nice. I just took a screenshot. Maybe we do the screenshot? It's okay. I think we, we'll get away with that one. That's no, fine. It looks fine. Okay, guys. Brilliant. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so Thank much you so for much. doing that. Sorry, I mean, it's always never quite enough time. Um, and I just had to manage it as best well we could. Done. So well uh, in some ways, it was it was good that it was only the five of us and not another panelist. Otherwise, it would be even shorter. So great to meet everybody. Hopefully, we can stay connected or, um, you know, connect again over digital means. I'm happy to have a chat offline with any of you. Uh, if you want to know anything much about PBEC or individually about myself, I've got a strong aviation background. Uh, if that's an area that you're interested in, I think Yuri and I are going to touch base next week again on yeah. uh, helping me actually with some of my other uh, business. But uh, if I can be of any help to anybody else or likewise, please feel free. You have my contact details or connect with me over LinkedIn. So I wish you a great day. Take care. Enjoy the rest of the sessions if you're Bye. joining. And if not, uh, don't work too hard. Happy Mid-Autumn Festival from China. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Cheers. Bye-bye.